Ayo! Welcome back to Shinky JRPGs. Or if this is your first time here, it's nice to meet you. My name is Justin, aka Shinky, and I've got another video for you. The Trails series is becoming more and more of a household name with each new release. The series seems to be gaining popularity every day, and with good reasoning. The games have some of the best world building and some of the best characters to ever grace the JRPG genre. And the story? It's second to none. Incredibly emotional, with the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. But today, we aren't going into a review of the games. On February 16th, 2024, Trails of Cold Steel 3 and Trails of Cold Steel 4 received the PlayStation 5 release. Physical, you will get both games in one package, or you can individually purchase them digitally on the PlayStation Store. Today, we are going to talk about the positives and negatives of the PlayStation 5 releases of these games, and if they're worth a purchase if you already bought them on the PlayStation 4. Before we get too far into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell, and like the video. It seems simple, but it really helps out the channel. Also, in an effort to keep this video spoiler free, most of the footage you see is from Cold Steel 3's intro chapter. It's no more than an hour into the game, very little of it is from Cold Steel 4, as even the intro of the game is a spoiler being a direct sequel to Cold Steel 3. I did my best to avoid any and all spoilers, but some might fit through the cracks, so just be a little bit cautious. Anyways, pop that corn, ice your drink, and let's take a look at Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 on the PlayStation 5. Alright, so let's start with the positive aspects of these ports. One of the most advertised additions to the PlayStation 5 ports of these games? The cosmetic DLC. Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 on the PlayStation 5 includes most, if not all, of the cosmetic DLC. This is not only limited to costumes and hair colors, but it also includes the Arcus covers. The included DLC also includes pieces of DLC that were free on the PlayStation 4. So two Shining Palm sets, one Zerum capsule set, and a set of a thousand pieces of each type of Sepith. Unfortunately, no U material sets, so the grind for that is going to be incredibly heavy. Still, it's nice that you get some DLC, but for a re-release, I feel all DLC should be included, not just a handful of it. That's just me though. Next, we can talk about the price point. Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 on the PlayStation 5 will run you $69.99 US dollars, which is cheaper than buying the PlayStation 4 copies at $60 each. So if you haven't played the games yet and happen to get into the series recently, you can save yourself about $50. Though that being said, just looking at GameStop.com, the PlayStation 4 versions of these games go for $20 and $38 respectively. So you aren't really saving money but you also don't get the included DLC, which I'd value at about $40, so I guess it depends how important playing dress up with your characters is to you. Not to mention, the PS4 versions of these games are incredibly hard to find these days, and this is easy to access, so again, convenience. The performance of the games are another benefit. The games feel quite a bit smoother, and that brief pause before battles is almost gone entirely. I'm not sure if the games are capable of 120 frames per second, I didn't see any option in the menu. However, if Ease 8 and 9 are of any indication, the game might run at 120 frames if your setup and display allows it. Still, the games do seem to run smoother, and you won't have to worry about both Cold Steel 3 and Cold Steel 4 suffering from frame rate drops like they did on the vanilla PS4. One more thing I want to talk about before I jump onto the next topic. No longer will your console sound like as a jet engine going into Mach 5 Hyperdrive. Back when I first played Cold Steel 3 and 4 on the PlayStation 4, those were the only games that made the fan of my PlayStation 4 go incredibly loud. I don't mean just run a little bit faster, more like it ran so loud that I had to turn up the volume of my TV so I could hear it over the PlayStation 4's fan. This is not an issue on the PlayStation 5, the game and console run dead silent with no concern. That's a relief because I swore my PlayStation 4 was going to take off into the stratosphere when I was playing the original releases. This last one is for the trophy hunters. Good news! There's another stack of trophies and two new platinums. The trophy lists are exactly the same as they were before, so you have the ability to platinum the games for a second time if that's something you're into. Personally, I used to be big on the trophy hunting, but I kind of fell off of that. So this isn't a huge benefit to me, but I know some people go crazy for collecting those Platinums. So that's definitely good news. Are you a trophy hunter? How many Platinums do you have? 
And do you plan on platinuming these games on the PlayStation 5? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, so there are several positives to the games being on the PlayStation 5, but what about the negatives about the PlayStation 5 ports of the game? Let's start with the very obvious one that made me question these releases in the first place. PlayStation 5 is backward compatible, so you can already play these games if you find the PlayStation 4 originals for cheap. I had the same complaint with Ease 8 and 9. Why release a remastered PS4 game on PS5 if it offers little to no incentive for another purchase? Definitely not something I understand. This next one was the same issue I had with Ease 8 and 9. You cannot transfer your PlayStation 4 port save files to use on the PlayStation 5. To my knowledge, Nisa is the only company that seems to do this. Cross save between PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 is such a basic concept, and I have no idea why it doesn't happen with Nisa. Square Enix did it with Stranger of Paradise and Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Namco Bandai did it with Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Even Xe did it from the PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4 with the ports of Cold Steel 1 and 2. It wouldn't be so bad, but each of the Cold Steel games are over 100 hours long each, so naturally you would want to transfer your saves over. This also makes it that much more time consuming for those who want to hunt out the Platinums again. No simple auto pop for you. I hope you're ready to spend 200 plus hours with Reen & Co all over again. However, there is a silver lining. You can still get bonuses for your PS4 saves of Cold Steel 1-3, and you can load your Cold Steel 3 clear save from the PS4 when you decide to start Trails of Cold Steel 4. So if you only play Cold Steel 3 on PS4, you're in luck. It's a little inconsistent, but I guess take what you can get. As expected, there is no new content in the PlayStation 5 ports of Cold Steel 3 and 4. This was a bit of a shame. For a new purchase, I would expect maybe a bit of new content to incentivize it. Maybe some new bosses, some new courts, a new craft or two. But nope, unfortunately there's nothing at all. This was the same with Cold Steel 1 and 2. When it got ported from the PlayStation 3 to the PlayStation 4 as well as PC. But at least that game added quite a bit of new voice acting. There's no new voices from what I noticed. It's just the same game that you already played, word for word and battle for battle. If you played the original release, you know exactly what to expect, just a little prettier. For the last negative aspect, did you buy DLC on the PlayStation 4 original release? Now this is just speculation, as there is no PlayStation Store page yet, thus you can't access any DLC, but based on past Nisa Falcom releases, well, I hope you're ready with your wallet because if you want to access that DLC you purchased, you're going to have to pay for it all over again, especially if Ease 8 and 9 on PS5 are of any indication. This is another thing that annoys the heck out of me. Most developers and publishers, when you buy DLC for a game, you get both the PS4 and PS5 versions of that DLC. But Nisa? Nope, you have to rebuy that DLC. You can go ahead and say that it's due to the PlayStation 5 port not initially being planned, but usually when that happens with games, you can still buy the PlayStation 5 corresponding DLC for free. This just comes across as incredibly greedy. Speaking of greedy, there is no upgrade path. If you want these games, you have to pay full price for them. There's no discount or anything. I love my Falcom games, but I wish Nisa were more consumer friendly when it comes to appreciating their longtime supporters. Alright. Now for the burning question. Is this a good point to just jump into the Trails series? Unfortunately, no it's not. Trails of Cold Steel 3 does give you a backstory option at the main menu, however that only recaps you on the events of Cold Steel 1 and 2. Never mind the first five games in the Trails series. This doesn't sound too bad, but Trails of Cold Steel 4 is basically Trails of Endgame. It features characters from both the Liberal arc, or Trails in the Sky, and the Crossbell arc, or Trails from Zero and Trails to Azure. So many characters and so many stories all reaching a closure after upwards of 700 hours of JRPG goodness. While you can start at Cold Steel 3, I would by no means suggest it as you won't appreciate a lot of the story arcs. And once you hit Cold Steel 4, you'll be completely lost. I understand that asking someone to play 7 games before jumping into Cold Steel 3 is a big ask, but at the very least, start with Cold Steel 1 and 2. It's definitely worth it in the long run. Cold Steel 3 and 4 are great games and the PlayStation 5 ports are probably the best way to enjoy these titles. Will you be picking up the physical collection? Or either of them digitally? Or not at all? 
let me know in the comments below. I'm always lurking in the comments and would love to get a conversation going. Are you enjoying what you're seeing on the channel? Make sure to like and share the video around and make sure to hit that subscribe button and ding the notification bell so you don't miss a second of Shinky JRPGs. This has been Justin aka Shinky at Shinky JRPGs. As always, thank you for popping by and I hope you have a wonderful day.